and welcome to Tea and Strumpets. I'm Kelsey, and today I'm joined by special guest, Laura Yaman from What to Read Next. Hello, everyone. I'm so happy to be here. We are so happy to have you. So tell us about yourself and about your show. So I am a podcaster. I have been podcasting since 2015, but I my book podcast started in 2017. So I had three shows in total. Oh. I, was, I, I was born on a job in 2015, 2014, and I was like, and I discovered podcasts, and I was like, oh, I can do this. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> I yeah. can get the mic and just interview people. And so I started a show, and then I was like, I didn't like the format of 45 minutes. I was like, I don't like that format. It's too long. <laughs> so I was in a bout of unemployment, so I started another show, and it was like 15 minutes. And because it was so small, I just kept interviewing people. And that show, I had an interview about someone calling, coming to talk about adult reading, like mm-hmm. reading for pleasure. And I was just fascinated because I was a reader, but I always struggled with finding recommendations. Like I okay. would find an author and then just bench where they're backlist and then just mm-hmm. be back in the same same boat. And I was reading a lot of like what's popular books. Like I read Fifty Shades. Or I did not read Twilight, but I read um, The Suki Stockhouse and all these different things. And so... Once she mentioned um, YouTube as a place to get recommendations, I was like, oh, let me see what it's all about. And so I started listening, um, watching videos about why YouTube in 2015, 2016 was all about YA. Mm-hmm. Fantasy and just like pretty much like what was the like, was at, at Court and Thornton Roses and a Court and Mr. Fury. Um, but there were a couple of romance creators who were doing videos about new adult. And I was like, oh, let me just give this a try. And that opened up the channels. I started reading The Deal by L. Kennedy. And I had a job that basically I didn't have anything to do with the job. I was like just sitting around waiting for <laughs> Yeah. So, so basically I had a phone and I had a Kindle and I just like read at my job. I basically was like reading, like consuming one book a day, like pretty wow. much. Like, oh, the dream. The that dream. Was- it's such a great job. I missed that job. I was I was underpaid, but I was reading <laughs> so much. And so I, between YouTube and the Amazon algorithm, I was like consuming, like I think I consumed like 275 books that year from May wow. to December. Yeah. Um, mainly indie. And it, and then 2017, I did about a book a, year, book a day. And so – Late 2017, my friend Clara, who I used to work with, was like, hey, do you want to start a podcast? And I was like, yeah, you know, I took a break from podcasts. And I was like, yeah, this sounds good. So we started this, you know, book podcast. And, you know, even though I had, like, uh, done podcasts before and it was successful and those different things, it was, like, starting from scratch. It was, like, I only had mm-hmm. one book here for that first month. And I was like, <laughs> we're just, and we're only releasing one episode a month, you know? All right, Yeah. And so a few months afterwards, I said, Clara was like, hey, I kind of like this idea of like having a book podcast because I'm like fascinated about this book world. I'm reading so much. I want to do more about this. Would you mm-hmm. be okay with me just taking on full time, like taking the taking the stuff full time and you step back as a host? And she's like, yeah, that's totally fine. And so that was the journey. I started with like, I tried to do book reviews. I did not like book reviews. I personally don't like it. Um, I like for me as doing it so that what I like is to do book recommendations or hear what, what I should read next. Mm-hmm. So that's how I start. I start interviewing influencers and bookish people and bookstagrammers and book tours and getting recommendations and I took a couple breaks in 2019. I went to book expo and I actually was like, I should just have this podcast to be something I wanted this podcast to be more of like a real thing, like not mm-hmm. like a hobby thing. And so I decided to pitch to, uh, to publicists, like in publishers. I'm like, hey, can I interview the author? Uh-huh. That's how the author interviews came about. I did mm-hmm. um, 2019. There were like one author a week. It was like really easy. Yeah, <laughs> nice. I was reading the book. I was like doing all the homework. Mm-hmm. And fast forward to March 2020, where all the events shut down. Yeah. Publishers were like scrambling to do book 
like book promotions they were like hey you got a podcast will you you talk to authors will you talk to so and so so and so and so i went from like one episode a week to five episodes a week <laughs> you know wow that's so, a lot of episodes <laughs> that's a lot of episodes that's a lot of us it's a lot of stuff and so i've done 530 episodes so far wow yeah so, and i've interviewed some big names like i just released an episode with julie garwick uh, <gasps> oh, I read a book of hers not that long ago for the first time and I really liked it. <laughs> it's, it's fascinating. You should listen to that interview because she's like, it's like old school romance novel. Like yeah. you know, how she how she came about the stories. It's like it's it's an area that I would not consider like my typical interview format, mm-hmm. but it feels like it's like in the history because she'll tell you like how she decided the secret, like how what daydream she was having when this book came out or what daydream oh. like it was very really like read the, the secret is the book I read yeah <laughs> so she talked about like how she came about with that book and how she you know forgot to be canon which is the family that she has medieval um mm-hmm. historical and contemporary the same family yeah. so um, impressive so yeah, so I interviewed Julie, Julie Garwood, Cassandra Clare, um, who else I've interviewed? I've, I've interviewed pretty much everyone that's out there. <laughs> it's got nice. The story. Um, and if it's not, it's probably in the works, like, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's been fun. It's been fun to do it. I I do a little mix of a lot of romance novels, but there's some historical fiction, some thrillers, mm-hmm. um, and some, you know, indie, self-publishing, you know. Yeah. So absolutely. So there's something to be said. So the goal of the show is for you to figure out like what to read next. So each author will share their book recommendations at the end mm-hmm. of the show. Yeah, that's something we do when we are talking with authors. It's like what specifically with romance, it's like what are your romance staples? Like what if you have a favorite, what's your favorite? Like what mm-hmm. are your, what were your inspiration points? Which books did you find tickled your imagination and made you want to go forth with this? So yeah, it's been really fun. We've gotten some good recommendations. We've read some of them, um, some to great success, others to, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it was, it's really nice just to get their take on it too. And I, I like what you said though, cause it's like one thing that all book lovers like to do is talk about books they love. <laughs> and which is the best way to find new books is to talk with other book people because they will tell you what you should read next. <laughs> yeah. That's what I love about it. It's like I get so many recommendations and I get to like and every time I'm gonna read something I'm like I may listen to an episode, I'm like, oh, because I'm editing and I'm like, oh, I can read that book. And then I read it, I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, I'm busted at reading stuff. Like it happened a couple of times. And it's been fun just to do this. I focus on folks that you love, not books that you hate. Um, yeah, it's like it's just like not the energy that I want to create. No, like, you we're know, here f- for positivity. It's like, yeah, you can talk about books you hate, but like, what's the point? We're here to talk about why we love books, not the books that make you want to go. Ugh. <laughs> yeah, well, super. So that makes you really the perfect person to bring on this show. So the reason I brought Laura on is because in the spirit of her podcast, what to read next, I thought it'd be great to put a list of books together to get ready for the spoopy season. And we can talk about all about Halloween books. So historical romance novels, it's hard to find books that are, you know, Halloween-y. So sometimes we're just leaning more into like paranormal historical romance or something like that. So um, I've told Laura, though, she doesn't have to stick with historical romance. She is allowed to pick whatever fun Halloween romance novels she wants. So I thought it'd be fun. So I have focused on historicals, and she is focusing on just fun Halloween books regardless. Yeah, so that's why we are joining forces today to bring you all the books you should be reading for this spooky month of October. Yes, I am so excited. (laughs) All right, so we'll get into it. Our first book is After Midnight, which is Cabot Number 1 by Teresa Medeiros. Our sister is marrying a vampire. When the ever-practical Caroline Cabot first hears those words from the lips of her fanciful youngest sister, she accuses Portia of having a wild imagination. But when she discovers their sister Vivian is actually being courted by Adrian Kane, the mysterious Viscount rumored to be a vampire, she decides to accept his invitation to a midnight supper and to do some sleuthing of her own. 
To both her delight and her dismay, she soon finds herself falling under Kane's bewitching spell. After all, what's a proper young lady to do when her sister suitor arouses more than just her suspicions? <laughs> I need to read this. <laughs> I really like Teresa Medeiros. Uh, I don't think I've read that one, but I've read some other Teresa Medeiros books. So, and like, they're fun. So I saw that under like when I was researching and I was like, oh yeah, we're going to put that in there. <laughs> oh, this is so good. All right. I'm cheating. I'm actually adding a wild card to you because it's on the list. So I got okay. it. Okay. But it's a Halloween book. So, and it's a really good Halloween book. So it's Her Halloween Treat by Tiffany Rice. It's a Harlequin Blaze. It's an old school. So you won't be able to find a mass market, but you can get a Kindle or audiobook. And it's mm-hmm. so good. So it's Trick or Treat, Trick or Wicked Treat. It was devastating, dirty trick. Joy Solo f- just found out her boyfriend of two years is married. What a dick. Joy knows her best chance to get over one guy is to get him to under another. Of course, heading home to her family remote cabin in Oregon poses some challenges in the available men department until she discovers this cabin comes with its own handy, hot handyman. Holy crap, Stephen Chris Stephenson. When his, did his brother best friend turn into a power body pile of blonde bearded hotness? He's the perfect Halloween treat and surprisingly dirty rebound guy. For a couple of weeks away anyway, except for Chris has other ideas, like proving to Joy that his blast from the past is a whole lot of more naughty Halloween hookup. Fun! This book is steamy. It's so good. It's a (laughs) 16 Candles remake. So if you love the 16 Candles, um, some 80s vibe, it's set in Halloween. It's so good. And there's a Thanksgiving. It's a trilogy. So there's a Thanksgiving. There's a December um, book. Oh, so you can just keep reading this series through the holidays. Yeah. <laughs> it has a Thanksgiving book, and Thanksgiving book is my favorite one, but the Halloween okay. one is a good start. Excellent. Awesome. Well, who doesn't want to read about a hot Halloween hookup with the handyman? Oh, the alliteration. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, taking us back to the past, this is The Perfect Poison, Arcane Society Number no. 6 by Amanda Quick. Mm-hmm. Plagued by rumors that she poisoned her fiancé, Lucinda Bromley manages to live on the fringes of polite society, tending her beloved plants and occasionally consulting on a murder investigation. For the notorious botanist possesses a unique talent, she can detect almost any type of poison, especially ones that have their origins in the botanical kingdom. But the death of a lord has shaken Lucinda to her core. At the murder scene, she picks up traces of a poison containing a very rare species of fern. So rare, in fact, that the only specimen exists in all of England, and it was stolen from her conservatory just last month. To keep her name out of the investigation and to find the murderer, Lucinda hires a fellow Arcane Society member. Caleb Jones runs a physical investigation agency. A descendant of the founder of the society, he is very good at protecting its secrets and frighteningly good at getting to the truth. Immediately, Lucinda senses both a raw power and undeniable intensity in the imposing man. But as a nearly overwhelming desire blooms between Caleb and Lucinda, they are drawn into the dark heart of a deadly conspiracy that can be traced to the early days of the arcane society and to a legacy of madness that could plunge Caleb into the depths of his own tortured soul. Oh my gosh. I know there's a lot going on. <laughs> so I, I have you read her futuristic? So we have actually never read neither Zoe and I have ever read any Amanda Quick. And in fact, we picked at the end of our governess list episode, we decided to pick a book that mm-hmm. from an a book we hadn't read yet to f- do on the podcast and we've actually picked i believe it's called the deception by amanda quick and so um i have now launched new author november and so uh next month we will be reading amanda quick and another new author to us because we've decided that november is now new author month i love <laughs> as it. in new to us not new to everybody else <laughs> I love this. I interviewed Jane and Krentz, our Amanda Quick. That's her. She has three different pen names. Yeah. And so she has this world. I like her futuristic world, which is mm-hmm. when the Arcane Society show up in the 300 years from now, but there's dust, oh, wow. bunnies, or there's dust bunnies and they're all like, so she has like her world is like, there's contemporary like happening now. They're like contemporary mm-hmm. romance. There's like historical romance and they're all related to it. And then she has this futuristic world that's like, 
it's it's very easy to consume because you can read them standalone. Um, mm-hmm. It will give you a guide. Like if you read this book, you'll hear their ancestors. Or you hear how these people were from the beginning. You know. Oh, cool! So she connects yeah. them all through like the different oh. ages. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, so so it's kind of like a fun world um, to get into it. But I like the fact they're not as intimidating as other books like you know when there's like big worlds out there yeah yeah that's always hard with a series is like or like any sort of author that's been around for the while it's like their world building is like you kind of have to know the world and if you start in the middle of it it's kind of hard to pick up so I get that all right what's our next book all right so we're going to talk about Sally Thorne's latest release which is Angelica Frankenstein makes her match um so this is a historical um paranormal spooky season book that's coming out so Mm -hmm. the synopsis is four generations every frankenstein has found their true love and equal unlocking lifetimes of blissful wedded adventures clever pretty and odd angelica frankenstein has run out of suitors and fears that she may become the exception to the family rule when assisting her her brother's victor's groundbreaking experiment to bring reassemble men back to life she really should have an agreeable gentleman coalescing in the guest suite which might be might be the chance to let the man get to know the, the real her. For the first time, Angelica embarks upon a project that is all on her own. When the handsome scientific miracle sits out through the lab table, her hopes of friends and romantic connections are thrown into disarray. Her resurrected beau, named Will for the moment, has total amnesia and is solely focused on uncovering his true identity. Trying to ignore their heart-pounding chemistry, Angelica reluctantly joins the investigation into his past, hoping it will bring them closer. But when a second suitor emerges to aid her quest, Angelica wonders if she's she's was too hasty in inventing a solution. Perhaps fate is not something that can be influenced in a laboratory. Or Will, whatever his name is, is her dream man, tailored for her in every way. And can he survive what what was done to him in the name of science or love? Filled with carriages, candlesticks, quartz, um, Angelica Frankenstein makes her matches a spooky season reimagining of a well-known classic that reminds you to never judge a man by its cadaver. Oh my gosh, that's so fun. I like that. What did you take? So this one is inspired, um, if you follow Sally Thorne during the pandemic, she actually has miniature houses that she creates. Like oh, cool. she, she she commissions these houses and stuff like that. And so during the 2020 pandemic, she created this house called the Blackthorn, Blackthorn Manor. Um, mm-hmm. and there's an Instagram account about it. It's like this very gothic, very spooky season house. And so she, she basically was based on this house project that she did the pandemic to do this book. Wow, know? that's so she's like the house inspired the imagination and she's yeah. like, I bet we could tell a story. That's really great. And that also flows nicely into this one in the sense that it's also just a spooky one. It has nothing to do with Halloween. Well, it does have any it does to do with Halloween. But this one is one that Zoe and I read for another podcast. I thought we had done it on our podcast, but we had it. So now it's on the list. Um, and it's called The Harvest Moon by Joshua Ian. And it's a short book. I think it's like 200 pages. It's not very long. Um, but we enjoyed it. So England 1834. On the night of a harvest moon, in the shadow of Mabone, Malcolm comes across a quaint village tucked away in the forest. It seems the perfect spot for a weary traveler to lay his head and maybe find a little company. But there is dark magic afoot, and lots of local gossip swirls around the seductive Titian-haired weaver, Daniel. All Malcolm seeks is a night's pleasure. He never suspected he would have to worry about losing his life or his heart. So yeah. It's really fun and it's very interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, it is a male male romance and um, and it's definitely got some twists. That you didn't, it's it's a lot in a very short period of time, um, but it doesn't seem rushed and it's like this little gem of a fun spooky story. Ooh, I love this! I'm adding that to my TBR. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the next one is Wolf Gone Wild by Julia Cross. Um, it's steamy, slow burn, fox proximity, geeky, Star Wars loving heron, cinema world hero with a naughty inner wolf. What's the worst thing can happen to a werewolf? So, unable to shift for three months, Mateo Cruz knows, to, knows all too well. His will has taken up his presence in his head, taunting him night and day with vividly violent carnal thoughts. Convinced that he's cursed, he needs the help of a powerful witch before he literally goes insane. Even Savoy 
has always obeyed the house rules of her coven. No war was. They're known to be moody and volatile. So when a distant-tempered, dangerous wolf stro- strolls in the bar and almost strangles one of her late-night customers, she's ready to bounce him through the door. But the desperation in his eyes when he begs her for help, she helps soften her heart and convinces her to bend the rules. What Evie doesn't know is Matilda's wolf has a mind of its own. And now that she's in his sights, he only wants her. He only wants one thing, her. So this is like a good serious starter. If you like, if you're new to paranormal, but you're, uh, you don't like the world building, you're kind of like afraid of the world building. Just mm-hmm. like, like world building. It's just like, there's a werewolf, but he's like, uh, he hasn't turned. So he's just like, a, you know. Okay. Yeah. He's a, a person. He has like alpha and alpha talks to him. Basically, like, I want her. I want her now. You know? <laughs> so it's a funny, funny rom-com that just happens to be paranormal. I love it. I will say this. Of all the paranormals, I think the werewolves are my favorite. <laughs> I don't know. It's something about it, too, only because I think similar to ver- vampires, but a little bit more, I feel like every author really does have their own take on werewolves and like what the werewolf transformation looks like and like what it entails. So I always find it really fascinating to like learn what that is. Cause some, um, are like literally a full wolf transformation, but then mm-hmm. others are like Cressley Cole, her werewolves when they shift, it's or they release their wolf is actually it's like this overshadowing of a wolf presence above them so Mm -hmm. it's like their physical being doesn't change but their like energy and aura expands and becomes visible to like other people so it's pretty cool like but i always just like the different that's why i like paranormals because every one does it a little differently and i like to see what those differences are okay so this one is I, I lied. I'm giving you one non-historical. Okay. And it's because I haven't read this one, but I've seen it around and I've wanted to. I just haven't done it yet. Maybe this year. <laughs> so this is The X-Hex by Aaron Sterling. I read it. There you go. So <laughs> nine years ago, Vivian Jones nursed her broken heart like any young witch would. Vodka, weepy music, bubble baths, and a curse on the horrible boyfriend. Sure, Vivi knows she shouldn't use her magic this way, but with only an orchard hayride scented candle on hand, she isn't worried it'll cause him anything more than a bad hair day or two. That is until Reese Penn Hollow descendant of the town's ancestors breaker of hearts and annoyingly just as gorgeous as he always was returns to graves Glen, georgia what should be a quick trip to recharge the town's ley lines and make an appearance at the annual fall festival turns disastrously wrong with one calamity after another striking reese vivi realizes her silly little ex hex may not have been so harmless after all Suddenly, Graves Glen is under attack from murderous wind-up toys, a pissed-off ghost, and a talking cat with some interesting things to say. Vivian Reese have to ignore their off-the-charts chemistry to work together to save the town and find a way to break the breakup curse before it's too late. It's so good. It's so good. It's great on audio, by the way. So if you're looking, if you're looking for a good audiobook to listen to, this is great on audio. And, oh, the, awesome. and the Kiss Curse is coming out next month or in September. So. So if you read this one, you got another one to read right after. <laughs> yep. All right. So in the spirit of the X Hex, I have a similar look like um, book, and it's Paybacks of Witch by Lena Harper. Um, so it, the synopsis is Emmy Harlow is a witch, but not a very powerful one. And be in part because she hasn't done she hasn't been home to the magical town of Thurston Grove in years. Her self-imposed exile has a lot to do with the complicated family history and the desire to forge her own way in the world and only the t- very tiniest bit to do with the Gareth Blackmore hired to the most powerful magic family in town and casual breaker of hearts and destroyer of dreamers. But when a spell casting tournament that her family serves as the arbiters for approaches, it turns out that they, to just pull the tradition or just truly impressive current of guilt trip that comes with it is strong enough to bring Emmy back. She's determined to do her familiar duty, spend quality time with her best friend, Lyndon Tom, and get back to her real life in Chicago. On her first night, Emmy runs with Talia Armuff, an all-around badass adept in the dark and magical arts, who is fresh off a breakup with Gareth Blackmore. Talia had let herself be charmed, only to discover that Gareth has, was also seeing Lyndon, unbeknownst to either of them. And now she and Lyndon want revenge. 
only one question stand is Emmy in. But most concerning of all, why can't she stop thinking about the terrifying, comp- competent, devast- devastating, gorgeous, wiggly, charming Talia Armov? So this is a female, female. Um, nice. And John Tucker must die. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, John Tucker must die. That was a funny movie. Yeah. That was a silly movie. It is. <laughs> but it's it's small town. But if you have watched John Tucker Must Die, and instead of going for the guy, the girls get together, this is the story for you. Nice. All right. So my final recommendation or my final list to get you in the season for Halloween is The League of Gentlemen Witches by India Holton. Just when you thought it was safe to go back into the tea house. Miss Charlotte Pettifer belongs to a secret league of women skilled in the subtle arts. That is to say, although it must never be said, witchcraft. The League of Gentlewomen Witches strives to improve the world in small ways, using magics to tidy, correct, and manipulate according to their notions of what is proper, entirely unlike those reprobates in the Wisteria Society. When the long-lost amulet of Black Barrel is discovered, it is up to Charlotte as the future leader of the League to make sure the powerful talisman does not fall into the wrong hands. Therefore, it is most unfortunate when she crosses paths with Alex O'Reilly, a pirate who is no Mr. Darcy. With all the world scrambling after the amulet, Alex and Charlotte join forces to steal it together. If only they could keep their pickpocketing hands to themselves— if Alex is not careful, he might just steal something else, such as Charlotte's heart. That sounds so good. <laughs> yeah. It has the flying houses. It has witches and pirates. It's like a whole different... I know, witches and pirates. That's a new combination. Yeah. In historical, <laughs> in historical romance, you know. Yeah, which is fun. It's always great to see a little paranormal-ish. Who yeah. doesn't love a pirate's, pirate romance? Let's be real. <laughs> I know. <laughs> In a non non captive captor, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, all right. So my final take on is a quick by Lindsay Sands. Lindsay, Lindsay has some Highlander books, so she has some historical. But this is her long term paranormal series. There's like thirty books in a series, but you can mm-hmm. read each one of them as standalone. They don't. They may follow some stories of the family, but don't be intimidated by 30 books you can read them a standalone so mm-hmm. the first this is the first book in the series and it's it's from 2006 i think it's a little dated but it's still pretty good mm-hmm. um so the book is that hot guy tied to Louisiana argentina's bed he's not the sir he's the main course Louisiana has been spending her centuries pining for mr right not just a quick snack and this sexy guy finds her in her bed looks like he might be the candidate but there's another more pressing issue, her tendency to faint in the sight of blood, and especially knowing Quirk for a vampire. Of course, it doesn't hurt that th- that this man has a delicious-looking neck. What kind of cold-blooded vampire woman would distress the bite like that? Dr. Gregor Hewitt recovers from the shock of waking up in a stranger's bedroom pretty quickly once he sees the gorgeous woman about to treat him to a wild night of passion. But is it possible for the good doctor to find true love for the with the vampire vixen, or will he be the good meal? That's the question Dr. Greg might be willing to sink his teeth his teeth to into if he can just get Louisiana to buy. All right. So the premise is so Louisiana's mom kidnaps Dr. Gregory Hewitt because he's a psychologist and he can deal with phobia. And so mm. he wanted to cure Louisiana's pho- blood phobia. So the best way to approach it was just to kidnap the psychologist. Uh-huh. So basically, it's like it's a comedy of errors. It's a very family, like a large family of like vampires, and they're they're like the world building is like their regular world building. They live in Toronto. They have a company where these there was like they get blood driven service to them and all different things. So it's so it's like a very contemporary book um, mm-hmm. with vampires, um, and it's funny. So yeah, cool. I I haven't read that one, but like I'm actually. <laughs> That does look like it sounds like a fun rom com esque <laughs> sort yeah. of book. Awesome. Well, those are our books. We hope that they get you into the spoopy season. As always, if you have recommendations you would like to share, you can always send us an email at romancepod at gmail.com. Um, you can also interact with us on Instagram. We do respond to our DMs. Uh, <laughs> But also, I want to give a big thank you to Laura for joining us today. Um, Thank you so much. It's been really great to be here. You had some great recommendations to add to our list, and I knew I picked the right person to join me. Oh, thank you so much for having me. And I love your recommendations. So I can't wait to pick those up. 
Excellent. So for our listeners, let can you tell them where they can find you? So they can find me on Instagram, what to we next pod. And um, that's right. I am active there. I do Instagram lives um, on a regular basis and you can find a podcast where we listen to your podcast. Excellent. So again, her podcast is what to read next. So yep. if you ever ask yourself that question, you know where to go. Yep. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being here. It's been really great. So listeners, since I don't have a Zoe to help prompt this, I'm going to have to do it myself. So what are we reading next time? You can join us next time as we read Love in the Afternoon by Lisa Kleypas, which is also our first book recommendation by one of our Patreons in the aristocracy. So this is really fun. It is our first patron picked book, and we're excited to get into it. Um, So thank you all for listening and join us next time as we read Love in the Afternoon by Lisa Kleypas. And may all your ever afters end happily. 